Hey there, everyone. Uh, so I've been looking into some Substance Painter alternatives, and uh, I've recently come across Instamat, uh, which has been a very interesting program, and it seems to be, to me, to be the most kind of capable alternative to Substance Painter. Um, but one of the main things that I really liked about Substance Painter were, were anchor points. And uh, it took me a while to figure it out, but I think at Instamat we have kind of a suitable alternative to anchor points, and I just wanted to go over how you can set that up for yourself. Um, Alright, so uh, this is the skull that I've imported here. Uh, it's available on Gumroad if you're interested in purchasing it, but it's a suitable test case for uh, changing workflows. Uh, initially I did bake it, test it, uh, paint it, everything in Substance Painter, um, but uh, for now, what I'd like to do is set up an anchor point for this object. Now initially, my instinct was to create a layer, just like Substance Painter, and then use a mask, uh, which we can create. So I made this new multi-channel, and uh, I want to go ahead and use a uh, projected mask, because that's usually you would bring in your anchor point onto a layer. I could paint here, but uh, looking a little bit closer, it's clear that there are no anchor points here in my sorry, my list of masks right here. There's no such thing as an anchor point or transfer or anything like that. Um, looking at these other things, there's generators, filters, effects. There's nothing really suitable, nothing one-to-one -one, um, like an anchor point. But ideally, we would be able to import into this mask I made, which I've set to UV projection. We'd be able to import the anchor point right there. Um, now, one of the main differences between Instamat and Substance Painter is the fact that we can actually have more than one type of asset in our project. So I can make additional skulls, uh, these 3D models, I can make graphs, and if I want to make those, I can just go up to the top right here, click New Project, and uh, for now I'm going to click the Layering. We'll make one more thing in a second. But Layering, I can go ahead and bring in something I'll call Skull Anchor and we'll import the same exact mesh that's already in my project, the skull right here. Bam, create project without template. And now I have uh, a second version of my skull that I can create the mask I want. And the goal is we're going to import the mask we create in this layer into the actual version we are painting right here. Uh, so to do that, first we'll go ahead and create one more multi-channel layer. Uh, in our mask, I can actually get rid of all these other channels. I only want base color. Um, you know, you could you could actually transfer any other materials, but I'm going to use it as a mask. So I'm just getting rid of everything but the base color. And we'll set the color here to, let's say, white. Like that. And so when I add my painting mask, now black and white. And I'll turn on symmetry here so I can do something like this. Some sort of, let's say, like a arcane symbol on the head. Or a, what's it called? Trepanning. <laughs> but this is the mask. Really simple. Black and white. That's what we want. This is a test case here. I'm going to save. Go back to my skull. Now, at the moment, I cannot import that file directly. Next, let me go back to package view. I can't import my skull anchor directly. I could go to my packages, look around, I could even search skull, and all I get are my images, which makes sense, right? We're not dealing with uh, bringing in a 3D model. So there's one more type of asset we can create for this project here, which is an element graph. Uh, and this is super cool. I think that uh, one of the most powerful aspects of Instamat is going to be that instead of having the Substance Painter and Substance Designer as separate things, it's all one uh, joined together. So we can utilize graph-based workflows uh, to create tons of different types of effects. Right now, we're just going to create a graph to take the black and white image from our anchor uh, project package and bring it into the, the skull package. Uh, so I'm going to create project without template. Uh, now this has nothing in it. This is literally, there's nothing in here. I'm just going to rename this to Skull Anchor uh, Graph. Save it. 
And first thing we want to determine is what are we going to bring in to the original painting? Well, we have to determine an output. So this is what's going to be the final result that gets brought in um, as our anchor. But we can do tons of different things. Uh, what we really want right now, though, is just element image gray. So we're going to be passing a gray scale image. Second, we can take the anchor package we made and just drag that right into our graph. And now you can see basically we have our mask. And we just need to pass the base color into this output. And that's pretty much it. That is just what we need. We just need to make this little relationship saying, I want the information from here and I'm going to send it out over here so I can access it in my actual skull project. So one thing I did forget to add was that when we make our skull anchor graph, we did create an output, but we did not assign a name to that output. So there was nothing to reference. So we do have to type in, uh, I put in skull graph, put in whatever name we want, uh, but it does need to be a named output. Now, when we go back to our skull and we're looking for our image, that's the name we're gonna be searching. So I can go in here, search graph, set it to one of these, or search everywhere. There we go, and now we have skull anchor graph. And voila, there we go. Um, looks like we have a slight tint, which means it's not a fully black and white image. If I go back to the skull anchor, make a new multi-channel, put it at the bottom, and just make sure this is completely black. And that would be perfect. There we go. So yeah, that's uh, basically how you set up something similar to an anchor point. There's a lot of interesting aspects to having the, the anchor point, in this case the graph, be a separate object because if we go to the graph here, there's actually a lot of nodes and operations we can do between importing the anchor and exporting it. Not only that, we can have multiple parameters. So a lot of the um, uh, kind of effects we would initially create, you know, we take a layer, and of Painter, you take a layer and then you import that layer into other layers, other masks, do different operations on them. But here you could kind of do everything. You could create multiple outputs, um, do multiple different operations in a very self-contained way, which I, I'm pretty interested to explore. But this is definitely the kind of simplest, uh, most foundational way to approach it. But yeah, I hope that helped. Um, I'm just going to do a little bit of self-promotion here. I do have classes open if you're interested in making, uh, learning how to make VR chat avatars or other things like this, painting workflows. I have mentorships open. Definitely consider checking that out. But thank you for your support. Thank you for checking out the video. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.